question. You want to gather as much information as you can. Where is the vehicle registered? Okay, what is in the vehicle? Like you said, how much gas was in the vehicle? You were filling up. Was it on empty? You know, what kind of – and then they can go back and, and refill in the blanks. It's a cargo van. It's a Ford. Uh, it takes 22 gallons, and the guy said there was only a gallon in it. So this guy can only go for another 20 miles maybe. So, yeah, those are all important questions to ask. Well, we are in uh, special coverage, breaking news coverage here on Eyewitness News. We've interrupted uh, your programming, and we want to thank you for being with us. But this is a dangerous pursuit uh, that, again, began uh, at about 1130 for us as far as coverage. Uh, we did see the result of an accident that was a result of this person uh, and it involved an LAPD officer and another car. But you're watching breaking news coverage. Uh, we're going to interrupt General Hospital. Uh, we're going to continue on this because this suspect is responsible for the injury of at least three people. And we've watched as this person has hit a person on the freeway, uh, carjacked or stolen a BMW, stole this van. So as Bruce Thomas has mentioned, this person is a high value arrest now because of the damage this person has caused uh, as a result of trying to get away from authorities. Right. And uh, those police officers, the LAPD officers who were injured in that uh, accident in the first part of, of this pursuit. And again, on your right, the right of your screen, uh, the right uh, area of your screen, you just saw the suspect running away when he got out of the, uh, the Dodge Caravan he was driving, the caravan that was disabled from the spike strip. I'm trying to clarify, are we staying on through General Hospital? Yes, or we, we are, are staying. We are telling okay. everyone that right now we have broken into coverage okay. with General Hospital. We will air it in its entirety at a later moment. We'll get that due the information to you as we can, but we're right. coming up on the two o'clock hour and just wanted to let everybody know uh, the, the reason we are with this is because of the dangerous nature of this suspect and the impact to the community here as he is traveling on the 101 North. Uh, looks like, I think it was approaching Canaan. Uh, so moving along pretty quickly, but this person has really uh, shown some disregard for the safety of anyone uh, in his actions behind the wheel of a vehicle. And yes. it's been three vehicles now. Right, and I lost count. Was it three gas stations that he pulled into? Uh, well, this one right here is, is was the last, the last was, one. Where he was one no, this is this is the this one the on the one. right where he was unable to get into That's that right. vehicle. He got back into the BMW and then moved to another one. So I think he went to three gas stations, maybe four. Remember, he drove around in that shell station. Yes. And we were and wondering, you asked if he was going to get gas. And that was a perfect look because I thought he was just looking to see where officers were. But apparently he might have been looking for cars at that point. That's but right. he was probably running out of gas in the caravan because at 11.30 is when the accident happened in Burbank. We didn't see this person for two hours That's until right. at about 1.30 we picked up this chase again. So if he was driving around all that time, it's reasonable to assume that he needed gas in that Dodge Caravan. And there's still a lot of questions we, that we don't uh, have answers to. You saw the vehicle a moment ago that was involved in that crash in Burbank. He may have been driving that car. We don't have clarification on that. Um, and, but but then they said he kept he sped away, so maybe it was a Dodge Caravan. But if he no, was involved I, it, in an accident, let's let's let's, let's there clarify. Would be, yeah. In Burbank, the Dodge minivan they were chasing a Dodge Caravan. Right. The Dodge Caravan was not injured or not damaged, but an LAPD officer and a second vehicle were. Got it. The okay. Dodge Caravan continued to drive right. for the next two hours. Officers were looking for it. Reengaged at about 1:30. We watched the Dodge Caravan be disabled due to uh, the, the spike strips. And that's when the suspect jogged into a parking lot, right. got into a BMW, we think he carjacked. It might have been just grand theft. Then we watched him take that BMW to another location where he got into this van. And we've seen him with this van run into somebody on the freeway on the at about 70 miles an hour. That's right. And he continues to drive. Well, now he's at 100 miles an hour and he is uh, still on the northbound 101 near the Lindero Canyon Road exit um, in the Agoura Hills area. Uh, and 100 miles an hour in this van is not, uh, not conducive to safe driving. Well, Bruce, at this point, how now, now you're starting to, uh, to me, it's almost as if you can breathe as a law enforcement agent because he stayed on the freeway for a moment. Uh, he's driving north 
up near Agoura Hills. I'm not saying that you're away from everything, but you are starting to get away uh, from maybe some of the heaviest traffic. Do, do you get a chance now to kind of regroup as law enforcement? Or now they, I mean, they're right behind them. So it's not as if they're stopping the chase, but do you like where this is more than, the, than before? Yeah, very much so. He's now on an isolated area, and I call it isolated, meaning it's not a heavy traffic freeway right now. He's heading out of L.A. County. He's heading into Agoura Hills, Hidden Hills area. Traffic's less. Um, as you head toward the beach communities. And you're not going to outrun the radio. So there's another CHP station with other officers ahead, and they'll transition into that. So as a supervisor and someone actually in this pursuit, I do take a, a deep sigh of relief. Yeah, because there were so many things happening from the near assault on officers to the potential carjacking or grand theft of two different people, uh, driving into the turn lanes and oncoming traffic on side streets at 100 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour. Uh, we've seen Air 7 clocked it at 125 miles an hour at one point. That was on the freeway, however. But it just seems as if the freeways are built for the higher speeds that this person has been willing to drive, as opposed to Tampa, uh, Rinaldi, some of the roads uh, that, that this person was on. Those, those roads are not, they're built for 45 to 50. They're not built for 95 to 100. No, you're 100% correct, Philip. And the fact that this guy's doing 100 miles an hour, which means you have to do almost 110, 120 just to catch up to the vehicle and stay with the vehicle. That's the other factor in this. And he's driving on the shoulder at 100 miles an hour. And, Bruce, in your opinion, do you think it was a factor that there was no gas in those vehicle, uh, previous vehicles? And, and now that he found a car that we believe is gassed up, this is why he's on the freeway and heading sort of farther out? I'm, I'm going to go with that and say yes. That's an assumption on my part, but I think that's a good call on your part also, mm -hmm. bringing that to the attention of the viewers. However, I do think in this vehicle, it doesn't have a full gas tank. As their 7HD pulls in on the left side, you can see the gas cap out. So how much gas is in that vehicle? Hopefully the driver was able to tell law enforcement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, now and now you see, again, it, he's, he's getting off the freeway at Moore Park Road. So we can see that he's off Moore Park Road, uh, on Moore Park Road, off the Ventura Freeway. Uh, again, the thing that you keep coming back to is he goes across four or five lanes of traffic with total disregard. You can just see him barely through the trees at that intersection. So it looked as if he was in the right lane, and now it looks as if he's turning left under the freeway. Oh, nope, there he is. You can see him in the on-ramp on the other side, and officers have pinched, oh, and him, in. Have pinched oh, him in. They have pinched him in. They have him uh, trapped on either side. Wow, okay. This, and is, you an saw aggressive, the... this is an aggressive uh, stance right now. And, and you saw that CHP officer actually drive his drive vehicle in. into this van. Bruce uh, so they've got him in the front and the back, but they're, they're still leaving him room to back up if he wanted to, Bruce. Yeah, I, I'm surprised they haven't. Um, I probably wouldn't pull in real close on this because I don't think it's going to end well. But uh, this is a very, very aggressive tactic by CHP. It's not something that we teach and or sanction. So for them to do this, oh, hands they're up. done with this individual. Yeah. He, and he is, uh, his arms are out the window. I don't know if you can see that, Bruce. It looks like yeah. he's attempting to signal that he, he wants to surrender. He's trying to open yeah, the door. I, I, his, time, his time is done. He, he realizes this is pointless. And the fact that CHP was very aggressive on this, we're not just following and playing anymore. You're going to jail, buddy. Yeah, and I think he knows it. Uh, and he is, he is following their instructions. He has laid down on the ground. Uh, arms wide, it appears that he is uh, cooperating. Thankfully, thankfully no one else was hurt. Well, yeah. now they'll have to, uh, they'll have to clear that van, yes? Yeah, they'll have to clear the van, but that's, that's the lesser of two evils. The biggest thing now is going to be the hours and mountains of paperwork that this guy just generated. And hopefully the officers are, are not hurt, as are any individuals. Okay, so we see the handcuffs going on, and Bruce, to your point, they were there. There were one, two, three, four officers with weapons trained, and I don't see less than lethal weapons 
uh, trained on this person. I, it does look to me like they were very serious that they thought this person posed a risk to other people. It looks like they're clearing, going through that jacket to see if he was indeed armed. I did not see them pull any weapons from there. But remember, when he went up to that one vehicle, I saw him reach for his waistband, and it was, quite frankly, terrifying because it looked as if he might be armed. So that, that had to play in to, to what they were doing when they were taking him into custody. They had to think that he might be armed, yes? Yes. You know, Philip, you know, to, to, just something to point out as we watch them walk the suspect from the van where he laid down on the street. Very cavalier attitude, very, oh, okay, you caught me type of thing. Um, you know, just he doesn't care. He really didn't care. Hmm. Yeah, he doesn't care that he puts thousands of people on the road in danger. And that yeah. is, uh, I mean, he's not that's struggling, disturbing. he's not fighting. Right. He's like, okay, you caught me, big deal. Yeah. Because ultimately, and this word becomes political, and I don't want to get on a soapbox, but nothing will be done to this individual. Even though there were multiple grand thefts, it's, it all counts as the same misdemeanor? Yeah, they'll plea bargain it down to a misdemeanor, maybe credit for time served. We're not going to put anybody in, in county jail for more than a year or state prison for this, now, depending on his record. And I'm not sure if the three, three strikes law even applies anymore. Well, but now, remember, he did the, officer two, he yeah, did was, injure two officers. I was officers. just going to say, there was... You're right, there you're were right. Two, and you have assault with a deadly weapon on a peace officer, yeah. which is an egregious felony. Yes, you're 100% right. Okay. So, all right. Bruce Thomas, thanks so much for sharing your expertise. Thank you. So Appreciate we're going to, since it's just now 207, we are going to quickly wrap this up and get you back to General Hospital. This has been breaking news coverage of a chase involving a suspect that was also involved in an accident that injured two LAPD officers at about 1130 this afternoon. He took two other cars during this chase, but now is in custody. We'll take you back to regular programming.